in 2009 and it started off in the payment space, right? And then they expanded off into different sectors like banking as a service. So in 09 and the early 2010s, you know, when your e-com is blowing up, when all the like the online payment gateways are blowing up, Unlimited was actually powering a lot of them and within like LATAM, within APAC, within Europe. So we have a huge online, uh, we have a huge presence globally. So um, we do card acquiring. So we accept debit and credit card payments in a bunch of currencies. We have a bunch of payment methods, alternative payment methods. Also, you know, your classic Apple Pay cards, banking rails. Uh, we do card issuing. Um, and yeah, we also have a full stack BAS solution. So this is just an example of what I was talking about. We have over 150 countries, many languages, bunch of payment methods, and Unlimit started this division of Unlimit Crypto within the past year and a half. So the idea was to take all of the rails that have been built over the past 15 years and apply them to the crypto game, the crypto, the crypto world. So this is the question, right? Like, why, why does this matter on or off? Like, why is this, why is this important, right? So I had this as an example. I'm sure a lot of you guys know this guy. This is the, P coin, the, the Bitcoin pizza guy from 2010. The guy made the first payments, probably one of the first use cases of crypto, which was he bought a pizza with Bitcoin, right? So how, how has this evolved since then, right? Like when it comes to buying the, the dream to buy a cup of coffee with, with, with crypto or to buy whatever you want with crypto, the first step, obviously you have to on-ramp. So that's, that's where we come in, right? So let me start off when you go to a store and you use your debit or credit card to buy something, the question is, what happens? Like, why, why is Unlimit different? How are we different? What happens? You have to understand the exact flow, and I'll go through that real quick, right? So use the call the card holder. You're going to use a card given by your bank, and the bank is the issuer, and the issuers oftentimes are called principal members within networks, like such as Visa or MasterCard. I'll get to that in the next slide. Um, so then after that, the card, the card holder goes to the merchant, all right? The merchant accepts your card payment through a point of sale system, and the store has a bank relationship with an acquirer. This ensures that they can accept the card and the payments. So in this sense, Unlimit is an acquirer. So we are the acquirer in that flow. And then the point of sale system is going to connect to a processor, which is like your fizzes or your squares. And the processor's role remains as the mediator that ensures the, uh, the conversation between the store, the network, and your bank go through. And then the processor informs the acquirer about the transaction details. The acquirer facilitates that transaction by connecting to the network and asks the card and the network, is there enough funds on here? And then Visa speaks to that Visa or whatever card network speaks to the bank, and um, with that with with those details, and the bank, which is the issuer, they check if there's enough money, and they send back a message saying either approve or decline, and then the processor transmits that message back, and if it's approved, it's approved, the money moves and goes to the right place it has to go. So as you see here, just simple swiping your card and like buying something, there's a bunch of players, there's a bunch of routes that your order has to go through. So with that being said, the question is how, why, why, why do we need another order off ramp? Why is this, why does this matter? So before my time at, at Unlimit, I worked, I've been working in the on off ramp space for a few years now. I was at a company called Wire and the Wire was one of the biggest on and off ramp players in the game. Similar to Wire, you have a bunch of different people like MoonPay, Transact, a bunch of different people. The question is how are we different? Pretty much what I described to you because we own the entire stack, we are the processor, we are the acquirer, we do the settlements. So we own this ent the entire stack of when you put your card in to when you buy crypto, we own that stack. Meaning, what does that mean? It means fees are not being taken off by, um, that's, that's, I'll be, I'll be right back. I'm sorry. Okay, um, whoops. Okay, yeah, so that means essentially when you're, card hold, when you're a card loader, you want to buy something, it goes through that flow, you're not going through your stripes, your world pays. You're not essentially, your stripes and world pays no longer are they taking bips and fees 
exposing you to like FX spreads. Essentially, when you go through us, you have the entire stack in your pocket. So when you go on like an aggregator, like if you go on AutoRamper right now, you'll see we're essentially like the default provider for a lot of pairs because of what I just explained. Because we own the entire stack, we essentially minimize the fees on for the user's end. Um, so as I was talking about, um, we are a principal member of, of, of different networks, like the Visa and MasterCard. Um, so the question is, what does that mean? So you have your JP Morgans, a lot of the banks, they're also principal members. That gives you the ability to issue and do merchant acquiring. So in order to actually do that, a lot of the competitors, they have to do it in a hacky way, right? You have to get a sponsor. You have to pay fees to essentially tap into the same network. We're already tapped in. So we're essentially avoiding fees on that end. And then obviously you have the processing, the acquiring, the settlement, there are fees being taken, o- being taken off on, at every route. But we essentially are able to bypass that because we own the entire stack. So the question is, so what, right? Okay, so what, what does that mean? That means now that you want to go and buy this coffee, up until now, because you had ridiculous fees, spreads, I mean, you're exposed to counterparty risk as well. So if any of these other on and off ramps, they do fraud, they have chargebacks, all of a sudden, now their partners, or now that, that on and off ramp, they have to pay fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 a month. They're exposed to higher fees because they've done chargebacks, right? They're, the counterparty risk is there. That also gets passed on to you. For the sake of this, for the sake of this hackathon, why does it matter? Because now you have the ability with the lowest fees possible. No longer are you spending a hundred dollars to get ninety dollars of crypto. That essentially we're mini- we're minimizing that as as much as as much as possible. Um, so why does this matter? And this and this is where we come to the hackathon. So now that you understand essentially the premise of the technology is not, you know, it's not new, like we're not building rockets. I think the important part is what I just described. It's just the why. Why does this even matter? But let's go into the actual hackathon. So we have account abstraction 101, right? So these are a bunch of different projects that are building in the account abstraction space right now, right? So actually we're working with Zero Dev, which is they provide the infrastructure for a lot of like account abstraction wallets and a lot of the functionalities. But there's a bunch of other players. I'll actually share this uh, slide and and all the different players after this um, within the, either like a Telegram group, which you can have my Telegram at the end, or within the actual ETH Global uh, Discord group. Um, so here's here's a couple a couple of providers. I'll share that later. But so the question is, what is what is account abstraction? Right? You've heard it a million times. What, like, what does it mean? Right? It's very simple. Right? So account abstraction is just having smart contract wallet functionality, right? The ability for smart contracts to send and verify transactions instead of EOAs like your MetaMask wallet, which can't, which can't do that. Um, smart contracts powered by, by, powered by account abstraction can be programmed with custom validation logic. So essentially your wallet now becomes its own DAP. What, is, what does that even mean? <laughs> so let me keep going. So with account abstraction, there are many functionalities that you can plug in. So you have here a couple. So you have gas sponsoring. You can pay for your users' gas fees and either, you know, any really any ERC20 token or ETH, but the ability to pay in really any token is a, is a big thing here. Batching, bundling in multiple transactions, um, providing the idea of session keys, right? So using a login method, you now have a temporary session key, which is essentially your private key. So that's, that's a new concept. You have social recovery, so if you lose access to your account, you can essentially have a backup. Um, you can, um, so you have upgradable validation rules. You can upgrade smart contracts. As I said, the gas fees and different tokens. And with the ability to have different plugins, essentially you can, pl- you can pretty much create anything into these wallets. Um, so the idea is, what is the idea behind this hackathon, right? So the idea behind this hackathon is, okay, you have unlimited on-ramps. Now, tr- combining that with the idea that you can build any logic within a wallet, what can you do? What does that mean? Imagine on-ramping into an account abstraction wallet. That wallet has logic written in it saying, hey, 
when ETH lands in his wallet, route that to an NFT marketplace, buy this NFT and send it back to this wallet, right? So before this, users had to go in and do everything. They had to go in, Google at an NFT market, figure out gas, figure out how to connect their wallet, figure out how to buy this NFT. With this, with, a, with this essentially where we're going now in the space, account abstraction, your wallet can be its own dApp. No longer do you really need to do anything and go anywhere. You can essentially execute logic to do whatever you want within this wallet. So here's some ideas that, you know, you could do. There's just a, some that I thought about, but you really can do anything, right? So you have the ability to schedule transactions like recurring subscriptions, um, automatically claim rewards for mining or staking, uh, buying NFTs as I talked about, working, if you're, if you're doing something related to, you know, potentially getting liquidated, you can create logic saying, hey, if I ever reach a certain threshold, fund my account, right? So this can all happen in the back. You're not actively doing anything. It's just pre-coded in into the wallets, right? Um, so what does this mean? It's up to you. <laughs> it's up to you guys to figure out what it means, right? The ability to have your own dApp in your own wallet. Essentially, your, your wallet now becomes Curve. It becomes an NFT marketplace. It becomes anything you can really imagine it to be. So here is the actual resources to get this going, right? So I'll, sh I'll pull up this right here. And I'm going to share this. I'm going to share these resources within the Telegram group or the Discord. Um, so let me go here. So we pulled it up. Fresh that. So this repo, essentially, you can clone it, and it brings this up. And I made this. I'll, obviously, I'm going to share it with you guys so you can build on top of it if you like. Um, so it says you come in, we have all these different login methods. You can use one, come in here. You now have automatically a wallet address spun up for you. This wallet, you can essentially add any logic, anything you want within it that can execute in the web three world, whatever you can imagine it to be. But essentially, and I have these two examples as what you could do. So we partnered with zero dev, as I talked about, um, we have them in our Telegram group if you ever need to like chat or have a question about how it works. But really, you can use any account distraction platform you want. But we have zero dev already, so it makes it easier for you guys. But these are some functionalities. You can like pay for the gas, uh, bundle transactions. And we have our on and off. We have our on ramp, which is essentially an SDK, which pulls up our on ramp in different modes, right? So you have overlay embed you can go to like hosted pulls it up in a different thing in a different window we have our api endpoints you can you can actually even get the widget through an endpoint which returns back a url um and we have our configuration endpoint so this configuration endpoint shows essentially everything when it comes to the countries that are enabled the payment methods the networks each token is on or a coin is on um the payment methods that are applicable to each jurisdiction. So essentially this will be the map of how everything, the possibilities of how things can link up. We also have the get quotes endpoint. You can get the quotes, get your orders that have already happened and get a single order. So five, five endpoints, right? And an SDK. So the, the actual, it's nothing crazy happening here, right? I think the, the interesting part is going to be combining this with the actual, obviously the AA wallets, um, and I will share this with you. I will share this with everyone. You can clone it, do whatever you want with it. Um, I have some more examples. I'll share this as well. So we have like, we have this, for example. So this is going to be service son of, okay, let me pull up something. So you have essentially the SDK. You can essentially do whatever you want in here, customize it, add any param you want. You'll see a change within the actual SDK. Um, we have that. And then we have the API docs as well. Of course, we have the API docs. We even provide you Zero Dev's uh, website. You can make an account there. It's self-serve. You can just spin up a test account and just pretty much plug it into the demo app and build whatever you want with it. Um, so yeah, here are my Telegram and Discord names. You can you know send me a message. I'm going to be out in the back. I have a table out in the back. If you want to come and ask me anything at all, go for it. Um, We'll add you to the groups, you know, we'll give you all the resources you need to get this going. And 
yeah, that's pretty much it right there. Um, yeah, let me know if you guys have any questions, any questions at all. I'm willing to take questions right now if you have any thoughts, ideas, concerns. Yeah, what's up, man? It is primarily like a fiat auger. So, yeah, exactly. You can choose your AA solution. I just did zero dev because you like we've already built stuff with them. It's easy. Like I can, we have like the resources to help us. But if you want to go, if you know something else, yeah, I'm agnostic to whatever you want to choose. Yeah. And yeah, cool. I appreciate it, guys.